All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. I love the family we have here, the new faces. Thank you for coming and joining us today. See you. I got a surprise today. Someone I hadn't seen in a while showed up, and I was like, yeah, I know you. <laughs> So oh, um, it's just so glad that we have this time together to just have family time. Hello, Cheryl mentioned home. And that's something that actually fell out of my mouth this morning when I was greeting someone new. I said, come make yourself at home because this is a home. <laughs> it's just fun how the Holy Spirit works. Um, but thank you for joining us online. We hope that you can make it here one day, but we appreciate you online as well. Um, we've got pre-service prayer here Sunday at 9.30, just a time intimate, together focused on prayer for our community, prayer for our country, prayer for our church body, and just giving blessings and praise to God, too, for what he provides. It's open for anybody that wants to come and have intent prayer. Um, it's here every Sunday morning. If you can't or you have a need throughout the week, you can text or email our prayer ministry who has a team dedicated to lifting up intercession for you. Good sure. Have that? Yeah. Um, but we in the church, we have cards that we can take. They're really handy to have. So if you have someone, you're like, here, I feel called, pulled out of our comfort zone. I, I feel like you can have this. Um, you, you need a friend, you need someone to support you. That rare of our family is for that. Uh, Men of Honors this week, Tuesday, uh, right? 6 p.m. I know I am human. <laughs> I know I am human. I, I err. So I'm like, that's right, right? It's Tuesday at 6 o'clock here. And I mean, just a time for the men to get together and build each other up build a foundation to support each other, do man things. Right. We've got Wednesday night Bible study here at 530. Um, it's just a, like awesome. Ne yeah, awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. It never fails to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Like he just will come. I mean, it, it just moves us, and it's just a great spot to come. I love that we get an in-depth look at the Word, and it's easier. It's easier to walk through with someone helping you and giving you different angles to look at it, more in-depth um, look into it. It's really an amazing time. Uh, if you're not able to come, you can find the videos online. We post them after the Wednesday night service. So if you're like me and need to recap during the week, you can do that. Or if you're not able to make it, just join us there. Um, women's ministry, there is no women's ministry this month. Um, normally it's held the second Saturday of the month, but this month due to scheduling conflicts, it just has to be put on hold, um, but we'll resume next month. I know that Glory, as she's leading the women's ministry, is getting ready to start like a book study. And she wants a head count on how many of us ladies would be interested in doing that so we can make sure to have the right number of books and materials. There is a sign up sheet on the back just to put your name so she can have a better idea of how many people are going to want to participate. So if you want to, go ahead and do that. We'll have more information closer to the start of that. Um, tithes and offerings, we have three ways of giving. We have in-person, which is my favorite. I always say that. You might be tired of hearing it, but favorite because you're here and I get to hug you. Um, you've got it uh, securely online and then you have by mail. Uh, other church directory, we are getting ready. The year is coming to a close. We're wanting to get our information updated. Our church family is growing and changing. So is our contact information. I know mine's different. Um, so we have some forms in the back that we can fill out. If you want to just check your information that's already in the directory, if there's no changes and you're just, you're fine with how it is, I'm going to take it as such <laughs> and I'll leave it in the directory as it is. But if you want to do an updated form, um, 
I know I've included on it this year that if we get pictures, if you're okay with them being posted on our church Facebook, there's a little spot for you to say yes or no. I, I want to start being able to share the stuff, um, but I want your guys' permission to do that. Yeah. So if you guys do that, at least include a yes or a no for that, it's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so that's back there. There's a manila envelope for your form to go into once it's filled out so it stays contained and private. Um, and then if I can have Dana and Cheryl come up. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Today is Pastors Appreciation Day, and we just thank you so much for what you do for us. You lead us in such a way. Um, the church family oh, wow. got together. Oh my gosh! And this is the finished product. Everybody was able to see. Oh, it's that shows how much we appreciate you. There's words of encouragement. There's words of thanks and praise for what you've done. We just, we wanted you to have it. Um, I kind of came across 1 Timothy 5.17. It's Paul encourages us to give double honor to those that preach and teach to us. And we just, yes, yeah. is, because you guys have worked so hard to create an environment to Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. Amazing and extremely humbling. Thank you. It's an honor to, it's just an honor to yeah. be here. And we so appreciate family and giving us a place to be. Yeah. And um, you, yeah. you're, thank you so much for sharing your lives with each other and with us. We're blessed. Thank you. So much. Yeah. Yes, and I just, once again, I almost don't know what to say. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I've already just grabbed the tissues and just smile. Uh, and just... <laughs> but you, you have received us as a gift from the Lord to help you. And uh, that's why it's been going so well is because it isn't just us. You've opened your heart and allowed us to help and be who we were created to be. Thank you for that. What a privilege. Thank you. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, well, thank you. Pray for at least a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you surprised him, so I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to say a prayer before we have Dana give him a minute. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us this opportunity. Thank you for allowing this environment with you covering us that we can come together and just soak you up, Lord. Without you, nothing is possible. Um, I know something that is always shared by Dana is like, where would we be without you? And I get stuck there. Because I don't want to keep looking back. I'm so excited about moving forward for you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm so excited about what you promised us and what you're delivering for us every single day. Thank you. So I pray that we are able to have comfort in you, that we can continue to lift up each other, continue to grow and work for a life that honors you, Lord. I pray that our hearts be opened up to the message today, to receive what you've led Dana to share with us. We're so thankful, Lord. We're thankful. Um, I don't even have any other words. I'm just overcome with feeling right now. So pray that Dana has the focus and the heart open to you, Lord, that he can deliver his the word that you have for us today. Thank you. Yeah. You have no idea 
how much it stirs me, knowing that you're blessed and that you're growing. And that it's working. What we're doing is working, not just making sure what we're doing is working. Amen. You know, I could have dealt with a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to be here, you know, I've had people right in front of me crying and this going on. I've dealt with all kind of stuff, man. I'm like, okay, we'll do this, Jesus. But now I'm like, yeah. I care about you. I care about your dreams and your destiny. I care about God's plans for you. I care. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everything we do and say has eternity in it. Remember that. There are no lifeless interactions, church. None. Every time you visit with somebody, talk with somebody, you make an internal impact for good or an eternal impact for bad. Every time. Because that's the only thing that has eternal significance is relationship with people. Relationship with God, relationship with others. That's it. Nothing else in this life has eternity contained in it. And even before I jump into the Word, I'm pulling out a little bit now. Thank you. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. A couple of things I was just going to share is <clears throat> um, that this is not part of the message, but I was I was actually um, I was talking with Cheryl last year. We were praying, and I was talking. Well, we pray together every day, which you guys know that I've shared that a lot. But we're praying, and the uh, Lord actually showed me some stuff, gave some revelation yesterday, some prophetic things, and I shared it, and uh, and and. You know what the Bible says? The devil comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. That's scripture. But I've come to give him life and give it to the full. Um, I was going to share something with you because this is something, you know, I've, I've, just not, I've not taught this. I don't know why I haven't taught this uh, here. or I don't even know that I've ever taught this one thing like this. But the Holy Spirit was just showing me this. When it says the devil comes to kill, you know, steal, kill, and destroy, when it comes to kill, it isn't what we think of normally um, it means to sacrifice. That's what it means there. It means to sacrifice, to kill. But I'm going to ask you a question. Can the devil sacrifice your dream? Are you sure? Do you have you sound confident? Positive? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you sure he cannot sacrifice your dream? Yes. Can you sacrifice your dream? Yes. Yeah. So how does the devil get you to sacrifice your dream? He tries to break the relationship you have with him. Yeah, and that's why I was sharing with Cheryl, because I actually saw the devil had been trying to get uh, even Cheryl in one spot to sacrifice her dream. So you can sacrifice your dream, but the devil cannot take your dream and sacrifice it for you. So that's what he does. He tries to manipulate us. He tries He tries to get us to use the creative power we have like a, like a little pickaxe to, to pick away at our dream instead of reinforcing it. And so please keep in mind, don't let the devil sacrifice your dream through you. Right. Don't do it. Don't you let him do it. He only has the power we give in church. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing, we were praying in the car this morning, and I was, I was reminded, sure, I said, you know, the devil does not take a day off, honey. We can't either. Don't you take a day off. Don't you stop praying for your loved ones. Don't you stop speaking life and health and strength and peace to those who need it. Don't take a day off. The devil, don't, he doesn't get tired. He never takes a day off. His time is short. So anyway, thank you for listening to that. But I just, I've had a lot stirring and just some moments and things with me and Cheryl praying and just thoughts. Um, dear God, help us to be wise. So today, the message today, I've, I've spoken on this topic, uh, I think, two years ago here. And I've spoken on several times in the past, over uh, the past years. But um, 
the reason I'm speaking all day is number one, Holy Spirit told me to. And you know, that's it, this is this is this is Jesus' church. Amen. I don't have the authority nor right to stand up here and just do whatever I want to. Okay. Uh, but even as he was speaking this to me, um, it was neat because even as this was being pressed on me, I had interactions with people. I had a phone call with, with one gentleman, and I've had talks, interactions over the last several weeks that has been hitting this over and over again. You know, that's how the Holy Spirit speaks to us often. It keeps coming up in conversation. We see it on online, on TV. It just He uses anything and everything to speak to us. And so he was doing that. At the same time, he was saying, hit this, teach on this, teach on this. But um, I've really been stirred. So anyway, so here we go. Let's jump into the Word. Um, you know, those of you who are called the gateway home, I know we have some visitors today. Uh, those who are called the gateway home, if, you, if you've been around me more than a couple weeks, you know I'm an absolute fanatic about this. Yeah, you bet. I mean, God's Word is so important to me. It's more important than I can ever tell you. And uh, this message is not stirred by any, any weirdness I've seen in our group. So don't think, well, wait a minute, see, poking us. No, I'm not poking you today. So if you get poked today, that's between you and Jesus, okay? <laughs> it was not delivered on my part. But church, we take the Bible seriously here at the Gateway. We do. And there are people who don't even go to this church that, that look at us as a group that, that lives by the Word of God to the best of our ability. And I love that. You talk about a, a good reputation. Our reputation in the community is a place to where God's presence is constantly there. We're known as that. I've heard from people. We're also known as a place that takes family seriously. And uh, you talk about, you, you just pat yourself on the back on that one because Thank God we're known as a place that Jesus is still Lord and he still inhabits. And also we're a place that values family. That's huge. But also there's another thing that I, that I hear from time to time. And I actually have people who call me to ask me questions about scripture. And things we're known as a place too that values the word of God and teaches the whole word of God. Cover to cover. Every bit of it. And uh, praise God for that. So value your Bible. Love, love your Bible, seriously. Love the living word, love the written word, and love the spoken word, the revelation. All three are God. But you know, the Bible is important because you know the Bible will cover every topic that we need covered. Do you know that? Yeah, it's true. It's true. Guess what? If the Bible won't cover, we don't need it anyway. <laughs> we just don't. We just don't. And so, you know, every issue we'll deal with, everything we'll face, God's Word has something in it that will help us navigate it and come out in victory. Everything. It's amazing. And the thing is, you know, I know I'm the senior pastor, but, you know, I love and care for everyone here. If you're visiting today, we don't have to know each other. I care about you. I care about your dreams. I care about your tomorrows. And that's why I preach the whole Word of God. And there's another reason why I preach the whole word of God. Right here. James 3 1. My dear brothers and sisters, don't be so eager to become a teacher in the church, since you know that we who teach are held to a higher standard of judgment. Church, all of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Believers, to receive rewards for what's done in the body, the Bible says. What you did while you had this short time in this flesh, you will be judged accordingly. As a believer, okay? And it's, this isn't an eternal life issue. All right, this isn't a heaven or hell issue at this point. It's for rewards. What did you do with God entrusted to you? Were you a good steward or not? And that's going to give you the rewards. And guess what? Those rewards are, that's, that's our uh, eternal treasures. And we, uh, some of them are for us, and a lot of them are thrown right back at Jesus' feet because without him, nothing would have been possible. That's right. I'm excited. I'm excited, man. I want to have a lot when I get there. <laughs> How about you? Yeah. I want to have a lot for Jesus. They have a lot for me to enjoy for the rest of, you know, for however long it is. <laughs> you know, I don't know how long eternity is, but it sure doesn't sound great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, praise God. But see, there's a higher judgment. So for people, people who teach in the church, there isn't just the judgment all believers face. 
there is a judgment as someone who has to rightly divide the word of truth. If I miss if I miss teach you, I answer for that. And that well, that's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's no negotiating at the judgment seat. What's done is done. And that's really what it means right here in 2 Timothy 2.15. This is for all of us. Some I take very seriously. Study and do your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman, a late tested by trial, who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. You know, we have to do our best to know the word of God. And that's why I say in this group a lot, study your Bible, know your Bible. I was talking to somebody on Wednesday night, um, somebody who was actually part of another thing, and he came and was asking me questions about some scripture. And I told him, man, I said, study, 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 study. I can't tell how many hours I spent for years and years when I first trusted Christ. I had commentary. I, I'd sit down and I'd have books all around me. Seriously, and I would sit there for hours and hours, day, uh, just years, studying and studying and studying and studying. But, you know, at that time, I just knew I loved the Word. And at this time, I understand why. All those years of studying the Scripture, I needed to be equipped to do what I'm doing right now. But, you know, church, for a child of God, there are very few things in the Scripture that are unclear. I'm not talking about a non-believer. They're blind. They can't see much in the scripture. And most of what they see, they don't like. Because the, the, the word of God is challenging. It's challenging for me and challenging for you. And for a non-believer, it's challenging. It's stretching. And see, but also there are many things, though, in the Bible for a believer, a child of God. There are so many things in the Bible that are crystal clear, aren't they? It's crystal clear. And see, because with us, Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. So whenever we need something, we can find it because the Holy Spirit will see that we get what we need when we need it. It's amazing. But see, church, what we have to do is if God's word is clear on any matter, we must bring our lives into agreement with what God says, not twist the word to conform to our lives. Yes. See, that's what so many people do is they take the word and they'll pull a verse out and they'll twist it to fit the lifestyle they don't want to let go of. Instead of saying, Lord, you're right whether I like it or not, and I'm going to turn, and I'm going to grit my teeth, it's going to hurt it. But I'm going to do it and bring my life into obedience with your scripture. Remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. God seeks hearts that will fully obey him. God, I see that I see that in churches, guys, everywhere. I mean, there's just churches. And I'm not speaking. Again. I love our our churches, our pastors in the community here. But I'm gonna tell you, you just see it. People are compromising the word of God all over the place. They just are. You know, there's a lot of churches sticking to the word, but there are also churches and groups that are that have compromised here and there. And it's just it's the signs of the times. You know, God says in the last days, people will heap together teachers having itching ears. I have no idea how somebody can stand up and teach the word of God and misteach it when it's clear on something. I have no idea. I'll never understand that one. I couldn't do it. I couldn't sleep if I did. I'd be praying. I'd like, God help. Forgive me. God, what other occupation do you want me to do? Because I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Gotta move on. So the message today. <laughs> And they go, isn't that a great picture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I looked at him and said, what? On that little boy's head. <laughs> hey, he's there. And you tell from the Bible that somebody else put some time in. So he's got a coach in the house. But it's the gold standard, our standard. The scripture's our standard, church. And here we go. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, it says, God, and I love the passion on this, God has transmitted his, his very substance into every scripture. Isn't that good? Wow. For it is God breathed. It will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. Then, see, there's something that happens when you do this, then, then you'll be God's servant, fully mature 
and perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment God gives you. Isn't that good? Yeah. That is that is just a wonderful, that's the best translation I've seen on that verse because it actually catches the true meaning of that verse, of those verses. But see, church, we cannot separate who God is from what he says. You understand that? We can't do it. See, all scriptures God breathed. See, Holy Spirit himself inhabited the individuals and, and, and instructed them meticulously on exactly what needed to flow through that ink pen for us. So that's what it means. God breathed. It's the very nature of God. Holy Spirit himself oversaw them. The entire writing of Scripture. So I know people say, well, the Bible's this, the Bible's that, the Bible's that. I promise you God is more than capable of preserving the integrity of the Scripture to get it to you. Yeah. People try to whittle away and whittle away of that and this and that and other, but I'm going to tell you something. God really is in control. Yeah, and nobody's messing his word up to the point where you're not getting what you need. Yeah. But you know, the Bible, it's our manual. It's our life map. The written word is. It's our daily compass. His word always points north. It don't matter where you're at. <laughs> It'll always point north. <laughs> Praise God. But you know, the, the thing is, is that the Word of God, the thing that makes the Bible so special, and, and one of the, there's so many things, but you know, this is God's primary tool right here. This is His primary tool that Holy Spirit uses to keep us becoming more and more like Jesus and changing day by day. This is it. Yeah, we get a lot through interactions and th through God speaking to us correctly, but I'm going to tell you, this is the primary tool. You've got to spend a lot of time in and, and those of you who come on Wednesday nights, make notes in your Bible. I mean, we, we dig. We dig into the Word here on Wednesdays. And even on Sundays, if something jumps out at you, your, your Bible is actually a workbook. It's not meant to be a, a, a thing that looks like it did when you bought it. Okay, if you got it for a while. <laughs> Fill it up and wear it out. I promise you, you won't wear it out before it wears you out. <laughs> and changes you. Uh, the Bible's good. You know, it's a treasure chest. So, here's a question for us. How many here, in reading your Bible, have seen something you needed to work on? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Well, that is a trick question. I mean, you're reading the Bible and you're like, whoa, ouch. <laughs> Ooh. Ah, all kind of groans and moans and stuff, crying, tears, you know, whatever you want to call it. That's because the Word of God's living. It's living. It's active. And, and I'll mention this really quickly. That's why actually when it says the Word of God is, I think it's, uh, Hebrews 4.12, it says, for the Word of God is living and active, is sharpening a two-edged sword to the dividing of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow. It is a discerner of thoughts and tents of the heart. But I will say this. What's neat is the Word of God well, you know, we, we know it's active. We know it's alive. We know that God's word is full of power. But the thing is, what's neat is we, what we see is what the word of God separates soul and spirit. What it means is that his word is the only tool that can separate the things of the soul and the flesh and the carnal man from the things of the spirit. That's what it means there. So the Bible separates so you can see and you, make, you can make good decisions. All right. And then what says the joints and the marrow. The joints represents our activities and our busyness. And the marrow is the source of life in our body. You see that? So his word separates the doing and the activities and even the giftings of God. It separates all the doing from the who you are, from, your, from your, the actual source of life himself. Isn't that neat? So the word of God separates all the carnal stuff and all the activities. And, and please, let, I have to say this again. Jesus did not die for your gifting. <laughs> He died for your soul. Yes. You'll never be able to work with somebody's gift in church. You can only work with people's heart. Now, I better get going. I'm on page three of ten. Thank you for that encouragement. Jim. Justin says keep going as long as it takes. So I'm going to go with what he said. Oh, praise God. 
But you know, we, when we read our Bible, we see better ways of doing things regularly. And that's what that's really what the word's about is to help us be more like Jesus. And that's all of our goal. And see, church, anytime, anytime we see a truth in our Bibles, mix our faith with that truth, and then do our best to align our lives with that truth, we are set free in that place in our life. Right. Partnering with this truth will, and I mean absolutely will. There is no maybes. His truth will set us free if we do our very best to partner and walk it out. That's right. See, that statement's easy to read, but often hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. And church, really, that's because we live in a fallen world. And you know what I mean by fallen? Amen, buddy. I like it. That was good. And you know, we live in a fallen world, and our bodies, our lives, we like to do fallen stuff. Don't we? Yeah. yeah. We do. You know, church, we're really good at being lost. We have to really work hard to be a Christian. Yeah. Lost comes natural. You don't have to change a thing. You know, you just, 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 all you got to do is tread water a little bit, and you'll go right on downstream. <laughs> you don't have to work. <laughs> And we know where that goes. Yeah. But see, if that wasn't enough, right here, church, if that wasn't enough, here's what else we're navigating. We, in, we all inherited things for our parents that God will require us to deal with, bloodline things, both good and bad. See, we all understand that, you know, the, the bloodline curses, the bloodline things. But church, we have to understand, it doesn't matter if it's a good thing you inherited from mom and dad. That has to kneel to Jesus, too. You understand? It's not just a bad well, I think, oh, that's bad. That's no, the good and the bad has to yield unconditionally to Jesus. Everything you inherited has to kneel and say, Lord, what will you do with this? Everything. And keep going. Now we add in our hurts, our disappointments, our mistreatment, our physical and emotional things, our wrong expectations. And I'm going to hit that one again. Church, one of the main things that mess us up is our expectations. Yeah. Bad habits, sin issues, unforgiveness, bitterness, and on and on. You know, we could have done a, a list that could have ran through multiple PowerPoints. But see, the key is everything that's in us that is bad will at some point need to be dealt with. Everything. And church, the, the hardest work you will ever do is inside of you. It'll never be in your spouse. It'll never be in your children. It'll never be in your grandchildren. It'll never be anybody else. It'll be in yourself. And our Bibles are the primary tool Holy Spirit will use in that work. So let's dig in a little more about what that looks like. So we're going to get into James here. Okay. James 1, 21 through 25. I love these verses. Yeah. All right. So let's do, we're going to dig a little bit. It says, therefore, ridding yourselves of all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness in humility receive the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But prove yourselves doers of the word, not just hearers who deceive themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man or woman. Okay, women, you're not off the hook here, just so we know. <laughs> I know you'd love to see the men work on more, but today we're all working on it. <laughs> oh, this is fun. It says, he is a man. Who looks at his natural face in a mirror. You see, I'm underlining this place where he's a natural face in a mirror. Okay. It says, for once, he or she has looked at themselves and gone away. He, they, says, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But the one who has looked intently at the perfect law, the law of freedom, and has continued in it. Not becoming, not having become a forgetful here, but an active doer, active doer. This person will be blessed in what he or she does. Now I want to dig a little bit here. Let's pick up in verse 23. It says, for if anyone is a hearer or not a doer, they're like a person who looks at their natural face right here. That's speaking of your carnal nature, your, your soulish desires. Those things that, are, that, that, that basically the world's doing. It says, whenever you look, at our natural face in a mirror. And God, this is what the truth is. And I'll probably do this again. Every time you open the word of God, 
Guess what? It's one of these. It is. You're looking at it, and guess what? You see Jesus, but you also see you. Okay. <laughs> Don't you? You do. You cannot separate the Word of God because it's living. The, the Word of God is always looking for an opportunity to help you. It's good. Every time you get here, the Bible's like, oh boy, what are we going to get on today? <laughs> because His Word is alive. I don't care if it's ink on this page. It doesn't matter. It's God breathing. He's here. And he's looking right back at you while you're looking at it. He's saying, oh, hallelujah. I see a lot. But what can they handle today? Uh, God's good. God's so good. Mm. But I want to dig in this a little bit more. So you look at your natural face in a mirror. You see your carnal nature. You see that fleshly thing. All right. But look what happens in verse 24. It says, for once he has looked at himself and gone away. He has immediately forgot what kind of person he was. But see, gone away doesn't mean my devotion time is over and i got to get to work. That's, that's not just saying you ended your time in the scripture. It says gone away. It's, it's a different thing. It actually means the person saw it and they perfectly, they, they uh, purposefully chose, they saw the truth, they knew they needed to uh, implement it into their life and make changes. And what happened? They chose that moment and said, I am not doing that. So they purposely moved themselves away from the truth. That's what it means. They gone away. They moved themselves away from that truth because it was uncomfortable. That's what they immediately forgot. They quenched Holy Spirit right there and said, I'm out of here. I'm not doing that. And they moved over here. That's what it means when it says they went away. They didn't just say, oh, i got to get on the work. I'll look at this later. No, there was no looking at it later. They said, I'm done. I'm not dealing with this. This is uncomfortable. I am purposely choosing. I will not do that. And they go away. Church, believers do this because it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. Hmm. And see, it's neat because it says, it, says they, it says they immediately forget what kind of person. You know, God is worth separates. We see that person that needs to be dealt with, and we forget if we choose not to go there, if we choose not to partner with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. Uh, man, I, I say that a lot around him. He will not beat you over the head with the cross. He won't do it. No, he's a gentleman. He, he touch, he'll touch it. He'll touch it over and over again. But if you, if you draw a line and say no, he will say, okay, he'll back off. He'll back off. And, and, and whenever you do that, he says, okay, I'm going to touch this again in, in, in a period of time. And hopefully then they'll be willing to go there. Because until they go there, they can't grow in this area, which is connected to this, which is connected to this, which equals that promise they want so bad. Hmm. One hard note the Holy Spirit can compromise your dream, church. See, working on ourselves is a lifelong project. And we're going to, we'll touch this a little bit more in a minute. Let's see 2 Corinthians 3.18. Okay? And we all with unveiled face. Aren't you glad that we have full unrestricted access to his presence? Yes. That's what it means. You know, the veil was torn. The Holy of Holies, we walk right on in. Hey, Dad, I'm home. I'm here. Isn't that good? Yeah. Aren't you glad? Jesus did that. Praise God. But see, we all, church, with unveiled face, continually, see that continually seeing as in a mirror. Here's that mirror again, the glory of the Lord. Or progressively, day by day, choice by choice, moment by moment, being transformed into his image. Look, it's from one degree of glory, I like it, even to even more glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Oh, praise God. See, church, every time we look in the Scripture, and I'm, I'll expand this scope a little bit, every time God speaks to us with a word of revelation, encouragement, because really, whether, whether it's the written word, the, the, the you know, G, a moment praying with Jesus, or even a, a prophetic word that he speaks to someone else. We live from revelation to revelation, church. We do. We do. We live from truth to truth. That's it. We're, we can only walk in the truth we have, not the truth we don't have. 
That's why God always meets you where you're at. He doesn't sit there and drop a carrot and say, when you get over here, I'll help you. He's not like that. He meets you right where you're at and gives you the truth you need for the day. Because sufficient for the day is the evil in it. And sufficient for the day is the evil in us. Well, God help us do work. You know, that's one reason I think the group here is healthy and doing so well. It's because we spend a whole lot of time working on ourselves. Right. <laughs> and a whole lot less time working on other people. Uh, praise God. The church, whenever we look in that mirror, we see Jesus. We see Jesus. You can't look at Jesus and not want to change. I mean, not really, really look at your Savior and not want to change. Oh, my goodness. See, don't walk away. Don't draw lines. Don't choose what the Holy Spirit can and can't touch. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Hmm. And see, the, the, another question for us, where it says we're changing from glory to glory. You know, the glory you're walking in today, glory means weighty, weighty importance or weighty significance. So the thing is, your life, you put it this way, God is building a heavy-duty life for you. Simply put, you know, a, a life that can haul things, carry things, deliver things. Be a blessing, you know, have a good heating system, air, you know, a life that does everything, kind of like a big truck that, you know, can, can do a lot of work. That's what, literally heavy duty. All right. But the thing is, is the glory you're in today should be more than it was a year ago. Are you making progress? I'm just asking. Okay. Do the same things that got you mad last year still get you mad? Do the same people rub you wrong that rubbed you all wrong last year or are you doing better navigating it? You see, progress is visible. It's tangible. You can see it if you look. I promise you. Are you closer with Jesus now than you were last year? How about six months ago? How about a month ago? Seriously. That's, that's what's talking about change from glory to glory. See, God's working in our life, and he's constantly saying, hey, come on. Let's go here because this is good for you. That's what salvation means. It means to be saved from things that are bad for us. Right. And hell was the ultimate bad for us thing, so that was the first thing we had to deal with. Then day by day, we're getting rid of those attitudes. We're breaking the bloodline curses. We're dealing with heart mode. Why do I want that? Instead of wanting you in the spot. You know, it's just, it's just a big process. It's huge. See, every one of us, here's the thing. Every, every one of us showed up at the cross with a million-dollar house that was rotted <laughs> and run down and degraded. We had termites. We didn't see them, but we knew they were there. He knew they were there. Ain't that right, Mike? Those things are bad. Yeah. Yeah. And probably a little bit like squim. We probably had weeds everywhere. Squim, grow, things grow here, man. We talked about that before the, the service. But things we showed up at the cross like that. We were, I mean, we, we look good, but we we're a darn mess on the inside. And that's where it all starts. But see, that's where the reconstruction starts. It's huge. And see, Holy Spirit is a general contractor. He knows what to work on and when to work on it. And it's all done through partnership with him. Every bit of it's done through partnership. Because, man, we're a huge project. And I don't care if you were born in a Christian family. Being born in a Christian family does not make you a Christian. First time I preached that, somebody got and walked out. <laughs> Seriously, this was years ago, but yeah, I got a snarly look and they got and walked out because I guess they thought through osmosis, mom and dad's righteousness transferred to them and they didn't have to work on anything. I don't know, but that's kind of what it is with people. People think, oh, I'm, I'm American, I'm a Christian. Well, no, you ain't. Now, if you call on the name of the Lord with your whole heart, yes, you are. But you don't just get it because somebody close to you got it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Personal responsibility. I'm going to touch that in a minute. That's a huge one. But church, we're a huge project. 
And see, if we're able to just work on ourselves and we were serious about it and we were, we were being unharassed and unmolested by the world, if we could just do that, it'd still be an awful lot of work, wouldn't it? But it'd be a lot easier. But see, we have an adversary in the world, which we know. We know who he is, and we know he has one-third of the angels helping him mess things up. Um, but he does everything in his power to harass Christians. And once again, I touched on one aspect. This his goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. And there's, a, there's nothing in him that wants to help us. Nothing. And he uses many, 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 many tools and many attempts to derail our lives and keep us out of God's best. And that's really, here's what this is. Some of the studies told us on the media. Let me say it one more time, the media. <laughs> Ceaseless fear and pressure. And I'm going to tell you, there's a such thing as getting too much news. I say that from time to time. There's too much news. If you're getting so much news that you're staying in a place of stress, stop it. Measure it. Figure out how much you can handle for the day and get that and then stop. Okay? I was talking with somebody recently about that. I don't know who it was. But for me, I only, I only see a teeny little bit of news each day. You know why? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was Jeremy. Jeremy and Katrina. But the thing is, I do want to know what's going on. But I don't want to know everything that's going on. Yeah. So I get a little bit each day. But what happens is I have to watch my spirit. I get a little bit. And if I find myself starting to get anxious and stuff, I don't stop. Because what happens, anxiety, you know what anxiety is? Anxiety and worry are interchangeable in the Bible. It means to have two minds fighting for first place. Mm -hmm. That's what anxiety is. Okay, so where the Bible says in James, a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. A double mind is the product of uncontrolled anxiety. Okay? So there's so much here. I made it to page six of my outline. <laughs> right. <laughs> but there's a ton there. But see, if you, it said, be anxious for nothing, the Bible tells us. But by prayer and supplication, you make your request known to God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will be yours in Christ Jesus. So if you get worked up, pray about it. If the prayer don't work, supplicate. Okay? Gosh, I'm going to keep going. But <laughs> supplication is us. Intercession is always for someone else. Okay? So remember that. Intercession is you getting in between God and someone else and pleading and begging for him to help them and him to do something for them. Supplication is you pouring your entire being out for you because you need God desperately. There's a difference between prayer and supplication. All right, years ago, I had a guy that actually would taught this. And uh, he said, supplication, here's a picture of what supplication looks like. King Kong has grabbed you and he's climbed the Empire State Building with you in his hand. Okay, he's holding on to the top of the tower and he's squeezing and you're begging and pleading with him to let you go that's what supplication looks like he said that's what you're doing with God it's like literally your, your life is being squeezed out and you're begging and pleading God help if you don't come through I'm done I mean you're begging with your entire being for God to come through that is what supplication means for a person for a okay. and I know I'm trying to stay on task here, but there's just so much here and I don't, I don't want you to leave not full today. I want you to have a good meal. <laughs> uh, but peer pressure. Oh, let's see here. I'll, I'm gonna, I'll pick up here. Feel good agendas. Path of least resistance. Encouragement. We get lots of those. The huge no personal responsibility movement. I can't help myself. Have you tried? No. <laughs> you know? And there are people who genuinely need help from others, but avail yourself. Oh, yeah, it's not a choice. It's who I am. I was born this way. It's somebody else's fault. <laughs> Peer pressure. Well, they're doing it. They're pretty cool. So it's working for them. Well, you don't know if it's working or not. Because I promise you, they're showing you their best self. They're not showing if it's not working. So embrace and embrace my lifestyle. You're do you understand what progressive actually means? It means to make progress. Embracing anything and everything because it feels good, that's not progress. That's regression. That's going the wrong way from anything good. Church, we're progressive. 
Because we're doing the hard work so we can become better. That's progress. Yes, we are progressing. Because we care. And we're trying to improve ourselves and our lives and our communities and our families. If that ain't progress, what is progressing? Hollywood. My gosh, man. Me and Cheryl, we, 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 a lot of the shows, we kind of step in. We just step in ankle deep because we're concerned. We're like, where's this going to go? Right. It's looking pretty good so far. Honey, are you ready with the remote? She's like, okay. <laughs> but you know, it's a shame. You have to you have to approach a lot. You're the They're like, at what point am I going to have to stop this? Or, oh, I see where that's at. And it just, it's like, come on, man. I just want to cut on a good show and relax. But that's just the way it is. But see, here's the here's the the, the, the devil's goal behind all this stuff right here, church. The world will never stop trying to water Jesus' church down to a powerless reflection of itself. Right. The more things you compromise on, the more anointing and power you lose, church. And only the anointing will break the yoke. The church is not supposed to be an exact reflection of this world. It never has been and it's never supposed to be. We can't have the values of the world, church. Some of them are okay because some of them are good. But a lot of them we can't have. We can't. You know, we can't have certain social priorities or we just can't and call Jesus Lord. We just can't. See, there will always be tension. I'm talking about hard tension between the world's values and God's values. Look what the world's values did to Jesus. He came to help them and do an internal work and they killed him. You know? And so let's read a few verses that Paul wrote almost 2,000 years ago because I know often we, we see what's going on and we think today's, today's just worse than it's ever been. I'm going to tell you what. No, it's not. <clears throat> it's always been, you know, a uh, pastor years ago used to say, we only, see, we only see a highlight reel of what was then. And he, he used to say, right, he used to say, for those who lived then, it was the nasty here and now. <laughs> you know? But, you know, we all have highlight reels, don't we? <laughs> but here you go. Here's Here, look at this. This is me. This is Paul wrote in 2 Timothy. Characteristics of the last days. Unless I'm going to read through this. Verse 1, and we'll keep going. But you need to be aware that in the final days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce. People will be self-centered lovers of themselves and obsessed with money. They will boast of great things as they strut around in their arrogant pride and mock all that is right. They will ignore their own families. They will be ungrateful and ungodly. They will become addicted to hateful and malicious slander slaves to their desires. They will be ferocious, belligerent haters of what is good and right. With brutal treachery, they will act without restraint, bigoted and wrapped in clouds of their conceit. They will find their delight in the pleasure of the world more than the pleasures of the loving God. Wow. This was written <clears throat> right at 2,000 years ago. Okay. Right. How many of us see this going on right now? Yeah. yeah. You understand, Paul wrote this way back then, and yeah, that's right, exactly right. See, every generation could say, yep, that's going on. That's going, I see it. I see it. But see, please don't let what's not going well and right that we see take our eyes off of what is going right. We all see what we want to see, don't we, church? Me too. If we look for God, we'll always find God. If you look for the devil, you'll always find the devil. Quit letting him waste yours and Jesus' time. We have to deal with all these things, but we can do it with style and grace. We can. We can navigate every bit of Church, we can. We can. We can do it successfully. We can do it with style. We can do it with hope, 
radiating out of us. See, the Bible says when they ask you about the hope, they better be seeing some darn hope or they ain't going to ask us. <laughs> what does hope look like? I mean, I've hit this several times. It's a smile when everybody else isn't. It's a pat on the back when everybody else tells you, I told you so, and you blew that one. It's a kind one. <clears throat> Seriously. It's a meal when somebody's hungry. It's a prayer when somebody's sick. There's hope. That's what hope is. That's why people ask you, what, why are you doing that? That's different than these other people. You see, hope looks different. It sounds different. It tastes different. It smells different. It feels different. So get out there and be different in a good way and get, start getting some questions. <laughs> All right, so let's move and keep moving. We're getting close, church. Just a few more minutes. I told you we like the Bible here. How <laughs> Uh, but see, here's the thing as we're navigating this life, here you go. But to do it, we must be as wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. And really, what this looks like is we'll all send us stay close to God. You need to be praying a lot. Like I said at the beginning of the service, the devil won't take a day off. Don't you take a day off. Pray much. Read your Bible. Listen to your Bible. If you do audibles, like Cheryl likes audible books, a lot of you guys like audible. I don't, it doesn't matter, but continue saturating your entire being with his word. Huge. And so here's something that's really cool. When you have questions on life issues, uh, this, is the, this is the beauty, one of the beauties of the internet. Google, what does the Bible say about this? It's not like, you know, Many years ago, you had to get this concordance and that commentary and that Bible dictionary and run a trail that took hours and hours and hours and hours. You just, cool, I'll go right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Ah, amen. And also, here's something else. Read and meditate on what the Bible says about the thing in question. When you find out where to go, chew on it. And then if you have a study Bible or something, look up other scriptures that are on the same type subject. But see, where people can get a little, little discouraged or get off track when they pull one portion of Scripture out, and it, it, it helps, but it doesn't really give the picture. If you're in a tough spot, read every single thing from cover to cover that the Bible talks about that. Because see, context is good, but cover to cover is God's heart on the issue. You see? If you look at everything there, that's actually God's heart on the whole matter is everything referring to that matter. Okay. And ask the Holy Spirit questions when you read the Bible when you ask him questions. Yeah, it's amazing. He'll actually tell you stuff. If you're not hearing stuff, you have not because you ask not sometimes, like the Bible says. And then, uh, once again, here's the thing, is do it. Integrate the Bible truths into your life where they're needed. And then unconditionally love, pray for, and respectfully share Jesus with others. Always be respectful. Always be respectful. People are precious. Don't ever force anything on somebody. If they don't want to hear about Jesus, don't tell them. You hear me? Don't be rude. Because what you're doing is you're making them madder and meaner towards the next believer that comes to them. Be nice. Be kind. But if somebody says, they don't, if somebody says, oh, I don't want it. Say, thank you. Thank you for being responsible with what you let into your life. And guess what? You didn't share Jesus, but you made them look better, more favorable on a Christian. Yeah. And then the next Christian has less ground to till. Uh, oh, praise God the church make lifelong commitments to these practices okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip some stuff here and just get, get close to wrapping up because I feel like we need to I just don't feel like I need to get into all this Okay, we're going to go to here because I just don't feel like I've still got three more pages. And I just don't feel like I need to hit that. I feel Holy Spirit right here in this spot for us. So we're going to hit this right here and talk about it. Please, men and women of God, never be ashamed of who you are and whose you are. Never be ashamed of that. Everybody else is proud of what they're doing. And most of the things going on in the world do not bring eternal life. So you be proud to be a Christian. I have no problem telling somebody I'm a Christian. 
And people are like, well, well, hey, he's important to me. Let me tell you what he did for me. You don't have to tell them what he's going to do for them. Start with what he did for you. That's right. <laughs> A whole lot less threatening. Uh -huh. But believers, be your ever-increasing best self. Every day. Stick with God in his word. And you'll have a much more stable life. You want to navigate the world more successfully? Stay in a place with Jesus of freshness, of life. Keep your relationship current. You know when it ain't current. You know you've, we've all done it. Those days when you get up, you feel, you feel already drained before you start. Get up with spunk because of Jesus. Get up with happiness because of Jesus. Start out your day, and for whatever reason, the Holy Spirit's reminding me again. I've said this almost every service. This new thing that I'm doing, I've been doing this to, in some capacity for a lot of years, but I've gotten aggressive with it lately, okay? When I get up, at some point between there and the coffee pot, or shortly into that first cup of coffee, okay? <laughs> Sometimes the coffee's important before I can do all these things. And I say, Lord, thank you that this is probably going to be the best day I've ever had. Yeah. And I mean it. That's right, yes. I mean it, church. I mean it. And I, Lord, thank you. That means you're going to navigate today with style. It's going to be good. I'm going to get every good thing you've got for me out of this day. And I mean it. You with me? I mean it. But see, if you start your day off like that, what do you think is going to happen with your day if you start off with, God, this is probably going to be the best day I've ever had. You mean it. Versus, oh, man. Here we go here. <laughs> Put it, I don't have to say anything else. The old man alone will derail you. <laughs> you know it. You determine the course of your day, church. Through your thoughts, your, 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 your language, your actions, everything. You determine whether you're going to have a good day or not. Not the devil, not the world. Do it, declare it, speak it. Enjoy it. Everybody has stuff going on, church, all of us. Every one of us, we all difficult, we all have difficult things, don't we? Everybody in here navigates tough stuff. We just do. But some people do it with a smile and with grace and radiate hope while other people flounder around and struggle too much. And I will tell you, it is the person, not the circumstances, that determines your day. The thing about Jesus is so good is he doesn't change. And church, here we go. We're about to close out. The Bible, our life manual does not change. I'm glad that I'm glad we don't get up and God's got a new plan that day that He didn't tell us about. <laughs> that'd be that'd be rough. And here we go. The living word Jesus and the written word has been, currently is, and will always be God's best for mankind. And remember this closing closing verse. Isaiah 40, verse 8. But even though the grass withers and the flower fades, the word of our God, church, our God, stands forever. Yeah, let's pray. Lord, thank you. Please, yes, thank you for your word. God, help us to stick with your word. God, help us to love your word, to crave your word, to feast on your word. God, help us to be doers of the word, not hearers only. Deceiving ourselves. God, thank you for this time. Lord, we love you and we are grateful for your word. In this house, we love you and we're grateful for your word. I can't speak for anybody else this morning, but I can say right here we do. And we choose to stick with your word. Every, every letter of your scripture we value here. Lord, help us to walk it out, talk it out. And sort it out where needed. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you.